You're joining your team late on wipe day and you're waking up in a 2x2. Two two. Your team has already amassed riches and made a few enemies in the process. Eventually, they will come for you. The question is, will you be ready? Meet the Alamo. Standard 2x2 two two turned into a daunting multi-TC fort with inner and outer peak downs. The 2x2 two two at the core is flanked by two external parts that upkeep most of the battlements. It makes use of this incredibly elegant footprint, which gives the design several advantages. First, the design is compatible with any standard honeycomb 2x2, two two, as long as it fits in this footprint and has roof access. While I will show you a durable 2x2 two two bunker base that you can use, you're free to combine the battlements with your own 2x2. Two two. Second, while the Alamo is a multi-TC design, it's the most simple one. Multi-TC, in particular with a lot of external TCs, can seem intimidating and tedious to set up. This base only has two external TCs, limiting the effort required to build it. Third, most multi-TC bases come with notable gaps between the individual base parts, through which raiders can shoot at you and at the base. One popular approach to fix this is the use of roof ramps as cover, a concept I introduced in the multi-TC Grand Frustrator. The walls of the Alamo, in contrast, have no notable gaps. In case you're wondering, the footprint does not just work for 2x2s, but also for 3x3s, 2x3s, or even 1x2s and 1x3s. The battlements provide you with a great set of internal and external peak downs, which are useful to defend against online raids. I put considerable emphasis on their stability, so that they remain intact and functional throughout the raid. And again, the ceiling of the base, despite being multi-TC, has no large gaps. But the best part of the base is that it is fully modular. There is no need to commit to building a large base early on. You start out with the most common footprint in Rust. No one is going to suspect a thing. And whenever you're ready, expand. Depending on how much you want to farm, build it 3, 4 or 5 floors tall. Leave most of it stone or fully upgrade it to sheet metal. It's your call. And if the wipe does not go well, continue living out of a humble 2x2 as generations of gamers have done since the dawn of Rust. The video will show you how to build a well upgraded 4 story version. While adding a 4th floor substantially increases the upkeep, it also makes it more likely that the peak downs survive a raid for a long time. The maxed out version will result in a daily upkeep of 2k stone, 9k metal frags and 194 high qual for the core 2x2. The externals will add another 3k stone and 3k frags each. If you are playing as a small group and are able to farm in the snow biome, this shouldn't give you too much trouble. In terms of raid cost, the fact that this base is built around a 2x2 with a single layer of honeycomb of course puts limits to its durability. The cheapest possible raid to the core TC costs 27 rockets. To take over the base, raiders need to invest an additional 16 for a total of 43 rockets. And then there are still loot rooms spread throughout the base they won't have access to. However, those numbers do not factor in the compound, the auto turrets and the fact that you will hopefully be shooting back at the raiders. After all, these types of bases are designed for the fun of repelling online raids. We begin our journey at the compound airlock. An auto turret is guarding large parts of the compound against grubbers. On this side of the airlock we find the external TC. The compound is overlooked by the external peak downs of the base. They are held up by sheet metal wall frames, while the walls themselves are largely stone. If raiders keep blowing straight into the core, those wall frames will survive and keep stabilizing the peak downs. The airlock leads to the inner defense ring. This auto turret is meant to help to engage raiders who already entered the ring. The ring itself is sectioned off with double doors and chain link fences. This helps you to keep or re-establish control during a raid. In this corner we find another auto turret. Together with its twin on the other side of the base, they cover the whole inner defense ring and can become a mean surprise to unsuspecting raiders. This door leads to a chute that brings us to the third floor. Here I use this floor as one of two bedrooms. The honeycomb holds loot and other items. These corners lead to the fourth floor, but we'll check these out later. First, let's descend into the core. Here we're greeted by a corridor with two windowed loot rooms. 
This roof seal guards the chute leading to the core. This triangle above it would actually be ideal for an auto turret. Spawn inside of the core to break the twig floor frame that holds up the roof. You can now enter the core. Here we find another corridor with a windowed loot room and the TC in the corner. This auto turret is undrainable and hard to reach via splash damage, making raiding through the chute a nightmare. Now let's head back upstairs. If we jump through this corner, we end up on the fourth floor. It looks quite similar to the third floor. Again, we use it for beds. I would give each teammate one bed here and one bed on the floor below, because they have different advantages against different raid strategies. On the opposite side, the same staircase leads back down to the third floor. This makes it harder for raiders to cut you off from moving between the two floors. The main difference on the fourth floor are those single doors. They lead into the shooting floor. The inner ring of the shooting floor offers a nice mix of smaller and larger peaks. As long as the walls are intact, laddering into them should not be possible. These are the outer peaks above the airlock. They use the classic single door technique to shield you from fire from afar. Those double doors can be closed in case those peaks are compromised. Behind the roof ramp, we exploit the multi-TC design for incredibly sneaky peaks. The ramp itself doubles as a roof exit. It uses the same design as in the extended original Frustrator X. It allows to see large parts of the roof. The best part is, if you get killed on that roof ramp, your body will slide back down into the shooting floor. Those shotgun traps prevent raiders from following you easily, unless they wish to donate gear sets to your cause. Thus, simply respawn, pick up your gear set and get back into the fight. Jumping out, we notice that the roof is kept very open. This is on purpose. As you can see, there are two auto turrets left and right. Together, they cover the whole roof. By not leaving raiders any place to hide, roof raids become incredibly risky. And if raiders manage to destroy those turrets, you've got two extra ones behind the garage doors of the roof exits. Those roof ramps, while being simple, are excellent for longer range engagements, and they cover you effectively from ground fire. But of course, this is just my suggestion. You can design the roof however you like. So much for the base tour, on to the build. While you can build the base from any 2x2, here is the design I propose to use if you are starting fresh. Before you start, make sure that the land offers enough space for the necessary expansions. Start with a 1x1 with a double door. In case you build in some kind of valley, you will later need lots of space in front and behind the door, but not so much to the left or the right of it. The TC goes into the left corner. Add starter items as needed. Extend into a 2x1 with a double door on the opposite side. Use it for sleeping bags, furnaces and a tier 1 workbench. Upgrade doors to sheet metal once the metal fragments are cooked. Now extend into a 2x2. Feel free to build a wooden triangle airlock with two single doors. This will be one of your main loot rooms. Use the space in front of it for the repair bench, but leave it otherwise empty. If you need to research items, just place the table into the corridor and pick it up when done. From the outside, you can place a triangle at half height into the TC room. This allows you to turn the TC room into a loot room as well. This provides you with a basic starter 2x2. Climb onto the roof. Above the airlock, place a chute entrance made out of two half walls. Add two more double doors straight ahead from the chute exit. 
surround the perimeter with walls. Eventually, both of those open squares will be window loot rooms. For now, we use one of them for utility items such as furnaces. Add a temporary jump up behind the door. Place the tier 2 workbench here. Leave the other square empty. Head back inside of the first floor and hatch it out the ceiling. Use a furnace to jump up. Hatch it out the inner door frame and replace it with a double door that swings outwards. Hatch it out the other door frame and replace it with a wall. You can now seal the base with a stability bunker. Place a floor frame and an upgraded roof on top. If you cannot place the floor frame or the roof, check if an object or one of your teammates might be in the way. Further try to place the floor frame and the roof from different angles if it does not work immediately. The roof now covers the chute into the first floor and provides an extra barrier for raiders. Use it to seal the base before you go offline. When you come back online, spawn inside of the core and destroy the floor frame. The roof is no longer held up by any building block and will collapse, which means that it will not block the chute entrance any longer. This concludes the extension of the starter. From now on, I will assume that you obtained the necessary blueprints. First, replace the furnace with a ladder. Add one shotgun trap against the wall to guard the chute. Here, it should not interfere with the roof seal. Replace the double doors with garage doors. If you get your hand on an armored double door, use it for the door to the main loot room. Seal the window loot room with reinforced glass windows. To save time, I will upgrade everything to its final tier. This puts the responsibility on you to remember to upgrade building blocks and time. For example, upgrade the foundation and the back of the second main loot room to armored before adding honeycomb, because you cannot reach it from the inside of the base. And please remember, those upgrades are suggestions. Keep an eye on the upkeep and suspend the upgrades if you feel that the daily upkeep starts exceeding what you're willing to farm. If you are rich, I would aim at having the inner 2x2 armored. This includes the left two walls of the chute. The second floor should be upgraded to sheet metal. Further, add one layer of honeycomb. Eventually, you should upgrade these triangles to sheet metal. However, you will be able to do that at any time later during the build, so leave them stone for now if you want. In front of the second floor exit, place a wooden door frame and a new jump up for now. We will later close this bit off. Above it, build a roof exit. Since the entrance currently does not provide a door block airlock, protect it with a shotgun trap. Once you get your hand on a tier 3 workbench, replace the tier 1 workbench. And since we are here, the space next to it is perfect for an auto turret. For raids coming through the chute, it is undrainable and it is too far away to damage it without suicide runs. Different. 
If sealed with a sheet metal roof stability bunker, this 2x2 base is a 21 rocket full rate at this point, not counting the traps. This concludes the first phase of the build. In the second phase of the build, we lay out the details of the multi-TC footprint. The following build steps are optimized to require the least amount of foundations to be destroyed by tools. Place a triangle into the gap and build out 10 squares. Demolish the first 9 and the triangle with a hammer. Come back with 6 triangles, 1 square, 8 triangles, 1 square and a triangle. Add another square and 3 triangles to the outer square. Turn the center triangle into the TC unit. Use two windows to protect it. The foundations should be sheet metal and the roof above the TC armored. Use the other triangle to better protect the TC from the outside. This pushes the rate cost from the outside of the compound to 12 rockets. Upgrade all foundations between the TC and the base to sheet metal. If you don't have the space to build out 10 squares, you can split this step in two. Add a triangle against the outer honeycomb, build out 5 squares to the side, build 6 additional squares out, then 2 to the other side. Come back with 6 triangles. Build 3 squares towards the center of the base, build out 3 additional squares, then 2 to the side. Come back with 8 triangles, 1 square and a triangle. As you can see, this last leg is the same pattern that we ended up with using the first method. Destroy the triangle that you placed at the very beginning. As before, add three triangles to these outer squares and turn them into a TC bunker. Upgrade all the foundations of that last arm. Destroy those other foundations or disconnect them to let them decay. Next, we complete the foundation plan. On each of the sides of the 2x2, place a triangle and two squares. On the sides of the external TCs, just place a triangle between the honeycomb. Make sure that the arm of the external TC terminates in two squares. Connect it to each square and show that there are three triangles, a square and two more triangles. Do that on both sides. The two external parts end up next to the square foundation sticking out from the core. This is one of the advantages of the design. External foundations matched with the foundations of the core create much smaller gaps than the traditional approach of just matching external foundations. This is why you have been finding this technique applied to all of my 2020 multi-TC bases so far. Optionally run a series of sheet metal warframes from the TC to the square. These have the advantage that unlike the foundations, they cannot be soft side picked. Next, we build two compound airlocks. Make sure that there are two squares next to the external TC. Then build an airlock like this. We're using two double doors and a garage door. The double doors block each other when they're both open. The garage door brings the raid cost up to discourage raiders from raiding through this airlock. Build the same airlock on the other side of the base. With the airlock in place, we can create the compound. You can use wooden or stone walls depending on which blueprint you find first. Line up a high external wall and clip it into the window side of the airlock. Then locate the single square foundation and place a wall dead in front of it. Place two more walls in a straight line. Then eyeball the remaining space. Usually you can place a fourth wall continuing the straight line, resulting into a gap in which you can squeeze another high external wall. Head back to the wall in the center and place two walls in a straight line in the other direction. Then use two walls to form an arc which ends inside of the external TC. Try to clip it in as little as possible, as otherwise it may prevent replacing destroyed building blocks.
place barricades on top to prevent grubbers from easily laddering in. As shown in some of my recent build, we'll use auto turrets to guard the compound. We will set it up inside of the airlock behind the inner door. Place it a bit to the right so that you have enough space to comfortably walk past it. This way it covers the largest possible angle of the compound. Placing it behind a door allows you to close it off when you are gone. This prevents random nakeds from jumping into your compound, draining them and destroying them. There's no need to make this a complicated circuit. Simply hook up an auto turret to a small battery which can be placed inside of the TC compartment. Then connect this battery to a solar panel which can sit just inside of the compound. You will have to use a wiring tool to refill its ammo or to authorize new players, but this yields the most simple circuit. Repeat those steps for the other airlock. With the compound being secured, deploy items to accelerate your build. Place the important items such as furnaces and oil refineries within view of the auto turrets. This concludes the second phase of the build. In the third phase of the build, we will extend the 2x2 further up. For this video, I assume that you will want to build the peaks on the fourth floor. However, you can build them on the third floor and save a considerable amount of upkeep at the expense of peaks that are more easily compromised. It's up to you and how much you are willing to farm. First, let's complete the honeycomb of the 2x2. On the sides that face the external TCs, build a chute into the space between the honeycomb. Use ladders to climb to the roof. Optionally, upgrade this wall behind the TC to armored. This way you counter the use of splash damage to cheaply raid both main loot rooms at once. Add a shotgun trap into this corner to protect the chute. On the other two sides, simply close off that space. With those chutes serving as entrances, soft side out the wooden single door frame. To prevent the chute from being a weak point, the outer walls should eventually be upgraded to armored as well, though this is not the most urgent upgrade. Now jump onto the third floor and surround it with walls. Locate the two chutes to the bottom floor. Place a wall, a floor tile at half height and two garage doors in front of them. Between the garage door place a locker. Note that if at any point you have trouble placing an item, close the garage doors on the floor below. If you plan to have the peak downs on this floor, create two airlocks leading to the outside next to each of the chutes. Since here we build the peak downs on the fourth floor, fill those triangles with furnaces. Repeat the same on the other side. Next to the chute to the second floor, add a loot room with four large boxes. Do the same on the opposite side. The remaining triangle next to it can take a large battery. Now let's section off the core. Place a full wall in front of the chute to the second floor. Then separate the core with three garage doors. Fill the space with beds. And maybe another locker against that wall. Close off the ceiling. The bits above the chutes to the ground floor need to stay open. 
and one shotgun trap guarding each of the shoot exits. Jump onto the fourth floor. Place a single door airlock to the right of the jump ups. Otherwise surround the outer perimeter with walls. At the entrances to the third floor place two garage doors. Above the jump ups place a half wall. Again squeeze a locker between them. This creates two triangle spaces which can hold a locker and another battery. The space next to the two airlocks can become loot rooms for four large boxes again. As before, separate the core with one wall and three garage doors. Place more beds. I would recommend to assign each team member a bed on both the third and the fourth floor. Close off the ceiling. Ideally upgrade it fully to armored. The core of the base is now complete, which concludes the third phase of the build. In the fourth phase of the build, we complete the outer defense layer. Locate those two squares and build an airlock. Have the exit on the same side as the entrance to the compound airlock. We use the same combination of double doors and garage doors as in the compound airlock. Upgrade those wall frames and this wall to sheet metal. They provide vital stability for the outer peaks. Next, we're going to build the walls. The walls will be three stories high. This means that you might need a ladder or twig platforms to upgrade the upper ones. Note that the walls are mostly placed along the inner perimeter of the foundations. Only those double triangles behind the airlock, as well as the square foundations of the core, will remain inside of the peaks. To increase the stability of the peak downs, we place a series of wall frames. Locate the two squares that extend from the core and add stone wall frames left and right. We use stone because they have a larger hitbox and almost completely block the gaps by themselves. Continuing on the inside, place two sets of wall frames onto the triangles next to the airlock. They shall be sheet metal. Do this on both sides of the airlock. This is how the wall frames on the inside of the base should look like. We continue outside with those outer squares. Add wall frames to the outer side. Place two sets of wall frames around each of the two triangles next to that foundation. On each side of the airlock, place another two sets of wall frames around that triangle. Further, place wall frames on top of the center of the airlock. This is what it should look like. The rationale for combining stone walls with sheet metal wall frames is that the wall frames will stay intact after the walls got rocketed out. Unless raiders deliberately spend explosives and destroy those wall frames, they will continue to hold up the peak downs, giving you a much better shot at defending the base. Those wall frames also allow to section off the inner peak downs. I would use four doors per side. Above each of the doors use one chain link fence. They may look role player, but they are quite effective in limiting raiders mobility. I would leave the upper wall frames empty, so you can still shoot down rockets and grenades from the peaks. Since we're here, I will show you four spots that are ideal for auto turrets. The best two spots are on those square foundations. Once you placed auto turrets on both sides, they cover almost the whole inner peaks. As soon as raiders break one outer wall, at least one of the turrets should start engaging them if the double doors are open. Another option is to place auto turrets into the airlocks, pointing inwards. They can cover wide parts of the peaks. And since they are hidden behind doors, you might be able to surprise raiders with them and turn the tide of the battle for the breach. 
this completes the fourth phase of the build. In the fifth phase of this video, we will build the shooting floor and the peak downs. Head to the fourth floor of the base. In front of the door, place just one triangle for now. Before you do anything else, place those outer peaks. Two triangles, two squares and two triangles. Now you can extend the peaks in front of the door to three triangles. If you hadn't built the outer peaks first, this triangle would prevent you from placing that outer triangle now. Place the same kind of peaks on the other side of the base. Now, place four triangles onto the wall frames, one triangle against the core, and those four triangles mirrored. Two squares go above the airlock. Now mirror all those steps on the other side of the base. This is how the peak downs should look like. Next we place the outer windows. Locate those single squares and place a window frame onto a half wall. Other than that we just use normal window frames. That's some type of protection such as embrasures. Only in front of the entrances, I would use reinforced glass to protect you while leaving the core. Use single doorways at those four spots. Have single doors open outwards to cover the peaks. For the inner parts, place window frames in front of the two squares and protect them with reinforced glass. Now we place the wall frames up here too. Rule of thumb is, place one if there's a wall or a wall frame below. This includes the outer peaks above the airlock. Further, place two each next to the raised window. They need to be connected to the square, not the triangles. Finally, along these triangles, you want to place a wall frame between each of them. They are vital to keep the ceiling gapless. Use double doors to section off the base, in particular the access to the external peaks. It's good to be able to close those doors should the external peaks crumble. While virtually all of the outer walls are stone, I would upgrade those windows and the walls below to sheet metal. They are the weakest links in terms of stability and therefore should be reinforced. Do not hesitate to create spawn points all around the peak downs. This way you can continue resistance in the case of a raid, even if large parts of the core have been compromised. Next we close off the ceiling. Place twig stairs to get onto the roof and start closing off the ceiling. You want to connect one floor tile against each of the sides of the 2x2. Then build metal floor frames above those outer squares with the raised windows. The rest of the floor tiles can be connected to the external parts. Those two spots with the floor frames will be the roof exits. We will use the same type of entrance that I introduced in the larger version of the original Frustrator X. Place a roof ramp like this. Above the roof ramp we will place a one by one with a garage door. And here is why we use roof ramps. If you get killed on that ramp, your body will slide back into the shooting floor. Down here we add shotgun traps to prevent raiders from following you easily. This means you can retrieve your gear set once you respawned. And with a bit of luck, you can retrieve the raiders gear set as well. Now we will add roof pieces to protect the roof from ground fire. 
This is easiest done from down here. Note how the roof ramps are placed one layer behind the outer peaks. This is done to give them more stability. Jump on top of the roof and fill in those remaining gaps. Feel free to use more elaborate defenses on the roof. But those roofs have one striking advantage. Once raiders enter the center of the roof, there is no cover. And this is going to be important because the roof will be defended by a series of auto turrets. Two of them can be placed onto those triangles pointing inwards. These turrets alone cover the whole inner part of the roof. However, open turrets are always at risk of being destroyed by patient raiders. Thus, we add a second line of defense. Like in the original Frustrator X, each roof exit will have another auto turret. These will be hidden and protected behind garage doors. It's up to you when you open up the doors and surprise raiders. Of course, auto turrets require electricity. The spaces on top of the roof exit can be used for two wind turbines. Connect each of them to one of the large batteries. I would use the large battery on the fourth floor to run the ground floor turrets. The battery on the third floor should be used for the turrets on the roof. For the circuit, keep it simple. Run the battery into a switch, the switch into splitters, and the splitters into the turrets. And voila, the Alamo. Please remember, the footprint and the peak downs allow to turn any 2x2 into a multi-TC peak down base. What I showed you today is just one example of a full base. Remember that you can adjust the upkeep by building the base less tall and by delaying upgrades. As always, I encourage you to make the base your own. Take care, Evil Wurst, out.